Hi everyone and welcome back. My name is Megan and this is episode 3 of Welcome to Azeroth, A Beginner's Guide. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the user interface. Um, I know we touched briefly on a couple aspects of it before, but today we're going to talk a little bit about more about it and setting up the preferences so that it works best for you. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. So with the user interface, there's several pieces of it just on your normal screen. So of course there's the mini-map and the description of where you are, what quests you have active, there's also the nameplates, one for yourself and one for your target, for you? your action bar, and then your chat box. So all of these things have some different pieces of them that can be customized. So the mini-map, of course, it can be made bigger or smaller. You can move you can ping to tell people where you want to go. Um, you can use this magnifying glass to track different players and objectives. I highly recommend, especially when you're first starting out, to track the innkeepers. So you can see where you can set your hearthstone. And then I also recommend making sure you track your flight masters just to make getting around a little bit easier. You can also track different townsfolk depending on what you're looking for. So you can select this to find auctioneers, bankers, um, people who sell food and drink, which is almost always going to be innkeepers. So this one's kind of a dual purpose. Mailboxes, and then of course some other things. In the major cities, so Ironforge, Stormwind, Ogremar, Undercity, Thunderbluff, um, so your main faction capitals. You also can talk to guards and be directed to those places as well. So, and we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later as well. All right, so let's look at some different things that we can customize. So one of the things that we can customize over here with our chat box is we can, if we right click where it says general, you can actually, you can change the font size. So if you want it bigger or smaller, you can change the color of the background and if you click on settings, you can actually change a lot of things across your different channels. And so if there's there's things that are spamming your chat and you don't want to see them, you can turn them off. So like if you don't want to see reputation gains, you turn it off and you no longer see it. Um, I One of my favorite things to turn on is the class color. So what this does is in any time somebody speaks in a channel, even if it's say, you'll notice that their name appears as their class color. It's just a fun little quirk that I enjoy. All right, so let's look at the main piece of the interface, your user bars or your action bars. So right now, you'll notice that I have two spells on my bar. And You'll notice that if I try and move them, I can't. This is because my action bars are locked and this is actually something that you can change to your preference. I like having my action bars locked just because it means that I can't accidentally pick up a spell and have it disappear off the bar or move it during combat. It's just, it's a convenience thing for me. You don't have to do it that way, completely up to you experiment around and see what works best for you. All right, so to get into our main menu, we can do one of two things. We can either press the escape key or we can click this red arrow that says game menu. So, and then we would choose the interface option. So the first option is gonna be the controls. So let me just talk a little bit about a couple of these cause they're kind of important in my opinion. So sticky targeting means that if you click on somebody, a mob or an NPC, or even yourself, you can't unselect yourself without using the escape key or by clicking on someone else. So I can click anywhere I want as long as it's not on someone else and that NPC is still selected, at least until I click someone else or hit escape. Now if I turn that off, if I click on someone, I can just click off and it removes that sticky targeting. I recommend sticky targeting, um, at least from a raid perspective, at the end of the game, at the later end content of the game, just because it 
prevents you from accidentally trying to click on an ability and losing your target. I never recommend clicking auto dismount in flight. Just because later on, once you achieve your flying, if you accidentally click a spell, that'll take you off your mount and send you plunging to your death. Not, not a fun thing. Um, auto cancel away mode just means that, so when you go away, okay, so if you're away from your computer for more than a few minutes, or you don't move or do anything or type in chat, you get triggered as being away. And normally it sits the character down and it sticks sticks a AFK message above your head and in chat. What that means is as soon as you move, it's going to automatically cancel it and say that you're no longer away. That AFK message will no longer show up either above your head or in chat. So I highly recommend that one. The other one I highly recommend is auto loot. So with auto loot, what it is, is when you kill... When you kill something, there's typically loot for you. So without that box being checked, it opens up the loot window and you have to manually select the loot. If you have auto loot selected, what it'll do is as soon as you right click to loot, automatically puts that loot in your bag. It just it makes it a little faster for you and a little simpler. You aren't going to accidentally miss loot because you forgot to click on it. As long as you loot the body, you'll get your goods. So, highly recommend that one. There are some other options that you can select. Um, if you prefer, What's instead of right-clicking on an NPC to pick up quests, you can left-click. And then you can also move that loot window so it shows up where your mouse is. You have some targeting or some combat options rather that you can change. So one of them uh, that I like to keep is I keep the do not flash screen at low health just because it distracts me. What that means is normally when your health starts to get low, your screen will start flashing red. I have it disabled just because for me, it's more of a distraction and less of a help, but it's completely Again, all of these options are completely up to you. You can set them how you'd like them, and you can always change them. These are not set in stone. They aren't gonna follow you from level one to level 110. Every piece of this can be changed as you go. So there's some other options in there. Um, display options, if you prefer, you can always rotate the mini map so it works as a compass. I can't handle that, so I don't. If you are brand new to World of Warcraft, I um, highly recommend having the tutorials be active. The tutorials are kind of fun. They're spread out. They don't show up for everything that happens, but they do contain some good information. And it's, they're just, they're kind of fun sometimes. I will, mine aren't going to show just because, oh, no, there they go. All right. So like right here left click a creature to select it and then it'll show, go ahead and tell you how to cast so they're kind of fun you can always turn them off if you don't like them but i highly recommend them this is these are your social commands so if you don't want to see anybody cursing in any chat channel you can turn on the mature language filter what it'll go ahead and do is it will go ahead and turn any type of cursing into symbols. Makes life kind of fun. Makes life kind of confusing, but it's kind of fun. Oop, and my tutorials are still active. Okay. Um, interesting. Well... I was hoping they would go away, but they won't, so we will pretend they aren't there for a few minutes. Anyways, okay, so social. Um, spam will remove any spam that's happening in the channels. You can block trades and block guild invites. You can block invites into other channels. Um, you can change who can see when you get achievements. You can change how your chat appears. You can add timestamps if you like them. Just 
all sorts of fun things. If, you, if you're a Twitter person, you can add Twitter integration. So you can actually take a screenshot and directly post it to Twitter from the game, which is kind of fun. All right, so the big one I wanted to show you is our action bars interface. So with the action bars, we have this action bar right here, but we can also scroll through several other ones. There's six in total. So you can either leave them like this and scroll through them and add things as you need them, or you can add more action bars. Four action bars on the right, or excuse me, two action bars on the right, two action bars on above your current one. Now, you don't always have to, you, you don't have to enable all of them. You can enable one or none. They're just there if you'd like to use them. You can, if you select always show action bars, that means they'll always be visible with the squares. Otherwise, if you uncheck that, it'll only show if there's a spell there. And then the rest of these are gonna be more of a personal preference, or even more of a personal preference, I would say. You can show what names show up above people's heads. So you can have your name show up if you'd like, you can have only your critters and companions. All of these options, if you hover over them, are gonna go ahead and give you some information, and you can decide whether it's an option you wanna select or not. You can change how the water, how the camera works, such as when you're in the water, you can change how the mouse works. Do you want to invert the mouse? Do you want to tweak how sensitive it is? If you have anything that you need a little bit of extra assistance with, we do have an accessible accessibility options. So we have a colorblind mode, so you can sit here. If you have any type of colorblindness, you can customize what colors show and how they show. You can, you can add cinematic subtitles I just found this one today. You can add a movement pad if you need to so that you can move your character from here. Which is kind of, I won't lie, it's just kind of fun to play with for me. Um, and then this is, the raid profiles are probably something you'll use later on. So we'll touch on those in a few levels. And if you ever find that you don't like an option, you can always change it, or you can always click defaults and it'll return everything to how it is from level one. The next thing I wanna look at really fast is actually your system options. So in your system options, you have a couple of different things that you can select from. You can change your graphic settings. And if you hover over each setting, it'll actually tell you what the game recommends. You can also do custom settings for a more high graphic intense areas like Battlegrounds and Raids so that they're not taxing the video card as much. There's some advanced options that you can set if you'd like. You can set some network options. If English is not your preferred language for reading or for audio, you can change it. Um, looks like at this time this version of the game at least because i am on a north american client um, does english spanish and portuguese and then once you change your text it, you also get the option to change the audio and then you have your sound settings um, so you can change what sound device is considered the default for output you can tell it what channels you can tell it how much you can change your volumes you can even change what sounds you hear. If you haven't listened to any of the World of Warcraft music, I recommend doing it at least once. Typically now I play with some type of music playlist going, but I love when I get a new expansion or I'm leveling in a new area, I'll always turn the in-game music on just because I will freely admit I was in band all through middle school and high school, so I, and I love music. And the music department at Blizzard does a really good job with their sounds and with their soundtracks. All right, so enough of me praising Blizzard for their music. That's going to go ahead and be the end of this episode. Next episode, we're going to go ahead and tackle 
uh, flight masters, changing your innkeeper, and resetting your hearthstone, and then just some other kind of fun things that happen as you hit level five and transition from the initial starting area into your kind of intermediate leveling area before you start to get out into the wider world. I hope that everyone's enjoyed this video. If you ever have any questions that I haven't touched on or have some advice of things that need to be touched on, definitely feel free to drop a comment, send me a message, or even come visit my stream on Twitch. Um, on Twitch, it's just Web Chica. Um, there's a link in the description, but I am always happy to answer questions via yeah, comments or, of course, on stream. But everybody has a wonderful day, and I will see everybody next time.